doesn't know, Curry's still in South Africa. He will be back on the 3rd of June. Um, what I'm going to do is go over a few announcements and then turn it over to Larry for worship. First things first, turn off or silence your cell phones if you don't mind. Thank you. We like to hear that. <laughs> Feeding Jesus Outreach will be on June 2nd. For anyone who's wanting to help prepare lunches or go into, and go downtown to minister to the hunger, anybody interested in that, you can get with John David. He's in the back in yellow shirt. Um, if you like uh, to make any financial contributions, we have an ammo bucket in the back that you can actually make your con con eh, contributions to. Um, is anyone interested in the senior outreach? That'll be on June 9th. Um, I don't see Alejandra here, but um, on June 9th or before then, if you see her, if, you wanna, if you're interested in that, get with her, and she can give you all the details of where that'll be and what will be involved. On June 22nd, June 21st and 22nd, we're going to have a camp meeting here at headquarters. So that's something, that's kind of like a surprise thing. So I don't have all the details of what's going to be in it, but be here. I'm sure we're going to have a good time. August 14th through 18th, we're going to have a 2013 John G. Lake annual conference. That'll be at the Holiday Inn. Um, we do an annual conference every year. And um, this year, it'll be, again, it'll be at the Holiday Inn just so we can fit the crowd in there. Uh, again, that'll be August 14th through the 18th. If you're interested in becoming a member of the church, there's a member's form on the route located on the round table. If you fill that out, we'll give you a member's packet um, for filling that out. Uh, if you'd like to become a partner with JGLM, fill out the form inside the Laboring Together, which is right here. And you can either turn it in at the end of the service or you can actually go online to jglm.org and click on partners. If you're interested in studying with DBI and would like more information, you can go online to DBI or you can go email at DBI accounts at jglm.org. That's DBI accounts at jglm.org. We also need volunteers for the Children's Training Center. Um, a lot of times we have kids, but we don't have somebody that can volunteer to take care of them. So if you will, actually, we're taking volunteers for that. You can fill out in the background table if you're interested. And the day that you actually do help with that, we do give you the teaching for free on that day so you can have it. So that way you don't miss anything. Um, we also want to hear your testimonies. Testimonies what you know, Jesus has done in your life and also the, you know, in other people's lives. It's always good to hear testimonies of what God's doing around the world in people's lives. Um, you know, so you can actually, again, we have testimony sheets on the round table. Um, also, you can go online. Just send us an email. Just let us know what's going on. It's always good. I mean, we get phone calls all the time. It's always good to get that type of phone call <laughs> as far as what's going on, you know. Um, finally, get DHT certified. Um, again, this is not just a church. It's not just a gathering place. It's, it's a training center. So that way people can know who they are, get that in them, and then go outside the walls. It's not about getting in the walls and staying in here. It's about getting and knowing who you are in Christ and going outside these walls, right? And bringing them up and then bring them here to get trained too and go out and do the same thing. It's about, you know, even here, we're real big on life groups, life groups in the home. That's a church, you're the church. So if we can get that going, then we can expand the word, expand the gospel, expand God's kingdom everywhere. And that's what it's all about. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as, like I said, we, we want everybody to become DHT certified. What that is is, if you get DH certified, it's more of a connection. Um, locally, we know everybody here, but it's, we want everybody in, in the church to at least know the message. Um, outside the church, as far as worldwide, it's more of a connection. If we know where you're at and somebody calls and has a need, and we know you're there, then we can send you there. You know what I mean? Or there's at least a point of contact for somebody that can actually meet with that person. Or if somebody's in a hospital, or, and we need to send somebody to pray, if we know where you're at, we can call you up and say, hey, we need you to go to so-and-so home or church or building or wherever, and then you can go minister to that person and set them free. Does that make sense? Okay, great. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and take up the offering. And if you make the checks to JGLM, and then we're going to turn it over to Larry. So, and Father, we thank you for these tithes and offerings. We thank you that they're for your kingdom, to expand your kingdom, to get outside these walls, worldwide, 
for the helping and the expanding of your kingdom and your love. And we thank you for the people that are, that are giving these funds, that, that they be multiplied, be multiplied unto them. And also for anybody who cannot give, we just pray blessings over them as well, complete blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Larry? We're going to wait a minute and let the uh, offering be taken. Or given, actually. Could we stand, please? Revelation chapter 1, verse 11. I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. The first and the last. What you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that has spoken with me, And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his feet, girded about his chest with a golden brand. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, Out of his mouth went a sharp, two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. He laid his right hand upon me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. We don't have the words for this song. It was written in Zambia. But it's very simple. So I think you'll catch it really quick. It goes, you are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega.
we pray. We give you all. Oh, we say to you, I am the Lord your God. I go before you in all your ways. I stand beside you. I'm all around you. Though at times you feel I'm far away, I'm closer than your breath. I am with you more than you know. And I am the Lord your peace. No evil will conquer you. I will steady your heart and your mind. Come into my rest and let your faith arise. Lift up your weary head. I am with you wherever you go. I am the Lord your God. I go before you now. I stand beside you, though oh, I'm all around you, though you feel I'm far away, I'm closer than your breath, I'm with you, more than you know. I am the Lord, your peace. 
evil will conquer you. Steady now your heart and mind. Come into my rest. Oh, let your faith arise. Lift up your weary hands. I am with you wherever you go. Come to me. I'm all you need. Oh, come to me. I'm your everything. Come to me, I'm all you need. Oh, come to me, I'm your everything. I am your anchor in the wind and the wave. You be afraid. Though your heart and your flesh may fail you, I'm your faithful strength. I am with you wherever you go. Come to me, I'm all you need. I'm your everything. Oh, come to me. I'm all you need. Come to me. I'm your everything. I am your anchor. Yes, you are, Lord. In the wind and the wind. So don't you be afraid No, your heart and your flesh may fail you I'm your faithful strength I am with you Wherever you go Come to me I'm all you need Come to me, I'm your everything. Come to me, I'm all you need. Come to me, I'm your everything. Don't look to the right or the left. Keep your eyes on me. You will not be shaken. You will not be moved. Oh, I am the hand of the Lord. I am the truth, the way. So come to me, come to me, come to me. I'm all you need. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's still calling us. He's still calling us. Every day, every moment. He desires to be with us, in us, through us. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren is thrown down, who accused them before our God day and night. He has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life, even to the death.
seated upon, throned in the Father's love. Destined to die, pulled out for all mankind. God's only Son, perfect and spotless one. He never sinned, but suffered as if he did. All authority, every victory is yours. All authority. You're sending us out, light in this broken land. All authority, every victory is yours. All authority.
Savior, worthy of honor and glory, worthy of all of our praise, you overcame. Awesome and powerful forever, awesome and great is your name. <laughs> you overcame, you overcame, you overcame. Because of you we overcome, you overcame. praise and glory to you, Lord, to the one true God. Amen. That's awesome that we, Larry didn't even tell me that he was going to play that song, but pretty much that song is the gist of what my message is about. So you know it's spirit, right? So pretty much y'all are free to go. So, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, the last time we spoke, we spoke of, I mean, I spoke thinking from the Spirit. Um, what we're going to go on today is on some truths of the Word of God that are already in us. Um, we know we're supposed to think from the Spirit, but a lot of people don't even know what that is. And it comes from the Word of God that's already in us. We get the Word in us, and then we think from that, just like we talk, talk, talked about thinking from the Spirit. Um, so we need to leave from, live from it, know it, which again... When we think and know from it, then we're actually doing the Word. We're actually living in the Spirit. Amen? So now I'm going to go through verses, and I want, I want you to realize that the Word of God does say that in Romans 10, 17, it says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Okay? So let's hear the Word and know that by it comes the faith in what it says. Right? Yes. So it's not just words that are coming in. It's life from that scripture going in you and producing in what it or it's saying. You get that? Okay? In Proverbs 23, 7, it says, For as a man thinking in his heart, so he is. Now, this can mean a lot, depending on what you think. Um, do you think you're a nobody? Do you think God will never accept you? Do you, God think, do you think God will never work through you? If you think on these things, then guess what? As a man thinking in his heart, so is he, right? But when we get in the Word and realize that this is not, that, you know, what I'm supposed to be thinking is from the Word, then things change for the better. Because this means I can get in the Word and realize the truths that are already in us, that are already in us, you know what I mean? Um, this is why we need, it's so important to know the Word of God, because the more we know of the Father, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and all that's been finished and accomplished through Christ, the more we can walk in full victory that we're supposed to walk in. Okay? The less we know, the more we could be tossed to and fro. You know what I mean? Um, there was a movie. I, I kind of put this because there was a movie years ago that I watched. And it really bothered me only because how, not that it bothered me, but how it affected other people that watched it. Because it's, it's a, it's in, in the movie, it showed God was pretty much fed up of his people. You know, he was just fed up with people, period. <laughs> So basically, he was sending angels, his wrath on people. And so in the movie, there was an angel that was apparently savior of man from God. So he was basically there to help people, help man, you know, from the wrath of God. I mean, y'all can hear how disturbed and wicked that is, right? I mean, that's to me a big lie of the devil. The reason why, why it bothered me it's because people, I would hear people see that they saw this movie and tell me, like, oh, that was such a great movie. And I'm like, have you read the Bible before? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, I mean, it, it, God is not like that. He's not a Zeus that's going to come in here and zap you, you know? He, he's not that kind of God. You know, our God is a God of love. He's a father that none should perish, right? None that should perish. In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Again, we know God's will is that none should perish, right? God loves you that he gave his son so that you can have everlasting life. Now we know that some of the reasons Jesus came for were to save sinners, save the lost that is free, right? To die for us and be resurrected, to destroy the works of the devil, right? To fulfill the law so that the spirit of God can come in and abide in us and to have life in it, life more abundantly and so on. We also know that we could never fulfill these things ourselves, right? At least up till you realize, oh, I need Jesus, <laughs> You're right? But God did it through who? Through his son, Jesus, right? Now, I want to share some things that y'all probably already know this stuff, but I want to share it with y'all because of the impact it had in my life, okay? If you'll go to Matthew 26, 36. It says, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to, sorrow, to be sorrowful and, and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little farther and fell on his face, praying, O Father, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. How many people have heard this before? Not thy will, but thy will be done. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've heard it from many people that not normally know what God's will is. Um, if you get in the Word, obviously you'll, you'll know what God's will is. Um, but I've heard people that will... They'll not see the manifestation, let's say, when they pray for somebody, and then they'll say, oh, well, it may not have been God's will for you to be healed. But we all know better, right? We know that it's God's will that we be healed, delivered, and whatever it is that Jesus paid for. Um, we're supposed to set people free from oppression because that's what Jesus paid for, right? Amen. Now, we were in Matthew 26, 36. Let's go down to Matthew 26, 47. And while he spake, lo, Judas, one of, the disciples, one of the twelve, came, and with him came a great multitude with swords and staves from the, th the, thief, ah, the chief priests and the elders of the, of the people. Now he that prayed, betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, the same as he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and saith, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew a sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then saith Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into place. Place all they that take the sword, so be perished by the sword. Then Jesus goes on to say, Thinketh thou I cannot pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that this must be so? Do y'all see this? Even though Jesus was exceedingly sorrowful in the death, he could have any time called and stopped and prayed to the Father and have 12 legions of angels come and save him. But guess what? He didn't. He made himself of no reputation and took upon him a form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man. And he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Why? Because he loves you, and he came to do the will of him who sent him, regardless of anything else, including circumstance. Jesus said, Can I not pray to the Father, and he'll give, you, give me more than twelve legions of angels? But then he goes on to say, How then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that this must be? You see, we know it's God's will that this happened to Jesus, right? Because of, what all, you know, because of what it would fulfill, what it would accomplish, right? Jesus was all about fulfilling Scripture because it's all God. It's all from God. It's all Him. So what does this mean? It means that the Bible is not just a book, right? This is a physical connection to our Father in Heaven letting us know His heart, a love letter to you. Amen. And now being in Christ, we are here to do the will of Him who sends us, right? Right? And in him we have the strength to do all things to the obedient of the word of God, to do what it says, no matter the circumstance, no matter a feeling, 
No matter an emotion, no matter the situation, we stand on the word. We believe on the word and we do the word because it's truth. Y'all get, get that, right? Mm -hmm. Moving on, let's go to 1 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackless, slackness, but is long-suffering to, to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the repentance. Do any perish? Yes, right? Is it God's, is it God's will? No. no, right? So what's the problem? Man has a choice, right? Man has a choice to work with God or not. Since God has already provided all that we need to make the right choice, we need to align our minds to what the Word of God says. We have to align our minds to what we have. We have to align our minds to what it says we are in Christ. It's, all this is important for the purpose here on earth, so that God can dwell in us and accomplish and expand His kingdom here on earth. Okay? So again, Jesus, who being in a form of servant, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even to the cross. And because of that, Jesus is exalted. Amen. Philippians 2.9, Wherefore God also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that the name of Jesus, every bow should bow, every knee should bow. All things in heaven, all things on earth, and all things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the God, the Father. Amen? Amen. Now I'm going to go through se several uh, separate scriptures that I want you to hear them and know the truths that are already promises to you all, you know what I mean, that are in you. You know, this is not a complete list, but it's a, it's a good start, okay? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 16. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man, no man cometh to the Father but unto me. How many ways are there to get to the Father? One, right? He doesn't say he's a way. He says he's the way, right? So... Do you know there's no other way to the Father, right? Jesus said he's the truth. Now, where do we find truth? Jesus. Amen. Well, he's the word made flesh, right? So, again, where the word? Where do we find that at? In here, right? And he's the life. He's our life, okay? And he came that you might have life and let more abundantly, okay? We are redeemed from the curse of the law. Galatians 3.13 Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree, the, that the blessings of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Christ, Christ bought us back from the, from the curse of the law. Okay? We were bought with a price. He paid the penalty by becoming a curse for us. Okay? The law brought a blessing if, you, if it was obeyed, and it brought a curse if you didn't obey it. Okay? Any failure to obey the law, you have pretty much the curses that are in Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68, which is a slew of curses that when you read them, you're like, whoa, you don't want any of those. <laughs> this means that any curse, any curse, sickness, pain, death, and anything that was paid in the atonement is gone. It's gone. It's wiped out. It's taken away. I don't know how I can come up with a bunch of sentences, but I'd probably pull out my phone. They're removed, and we're no longer slaves of it. Okay? For what? That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And through the Spirit of God, we have so much that allows us to walk in victory, power, and authority over everything, anything that Jesus paid for. Amen. Right? So we're redeemed from all the curses that are in Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68, and we receive the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. And we're not going to go through that, but I'd recommend just kind of going through it. Because even when you get into the, 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 uh, the curses, as far as when it gets into the sicknesses, you, it talks about what sicknesses you will get if you did not obey. Well, Jesus became that curse. And it also gets in there about, and every disease that is not even written in there was a curse. Mm -hmm. That means Jesus took all that away. Did I get that? You get that? Amen. 
So we're no longer condemned. Romans 8, 1, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. When you walk after the Spirit in Christ, God does not condemn us. Okay? A person is either condemning himself or is allowing the devil to condemn him. Okay? Remember, the devil is the thief and the liar, and he does not want you to know that you're freeing him in, in Christ, okay? He wants you to live in his lies because Christ took all the punishment on himself that the law required, okay? He did this so that you would not have to. That's big. I mean, sometimes we hear these lines, and it's kind of like, hmm, that sounds good, but it's, it's this is big, <laughs> okay? This is like life. Right here. This changes your life. You grab this whole, it changes your life. Amen. We have, we, when we receive Jesus our Lord, we have the spirit of life dwelling in us. Okay? And that sets us, that sets us free from the law of sin and death. And even that one is huge. <laughs> I mean, it's just so awesome to realize who we have in us. And basically, this whole message is about overcoming. The song you just it's overcoming knowing who you are in Christ. You get that in you. It's already in you. It's just yeah. you getting, catching up to that reality. Remember, we're using our mind to catch up with what we already are in the spirit, okay? So, not me, but Christ. Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You may have heard this before. Because this is one of my favorite verses. <laughs> you know what I mean? I am crucified with Christ. It's not me who lives, but Christ lives in me. Okay? So again, you all may have heard this before. So if it's not me, but Christ in me, then who is me? Christ, right? And the life I now live, I live by what? The faith of who? The Son of God, right? Who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, I'm dead, you're dead, right? And now Christ lives in us. I don't need to look at anything else, okay? I, I can look at lack, but that's not me anymore, okay? That person died. That person doesn't exist, okay? I can totally focus on Christ and his faith in me and live that life. Y'all get that? Yeah. We can boldly go to the throne of grace. Hebrews 4, 14 Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in help of time of need. In time of need. We have a high priest, Jesus, right? who passed into the heavens and was tempted just like we were, yet never sinned. Because of Jesus' because of Jesus' compassion for us, he is able to relate to us. We can boldly approach the Heavenly Father with our prayer. And we know, in our, and we know, we know he hears us, Thank you, right? Thank you. And everything we could ever need in any circumstance has really already been provided. We just need to realize our blessings in Christ. We don't, need, we, don't, we don't even need to ask God for what he's already provided. It's ours already, right? You know, how awesome is it to have Jesus as our high priest, our mediator to God, right, in us? I mean, with his spirit in us, we have direct access to him. Remember, in Christ, we're totally blessed, right? Right? We have life in the Son and confidence that God hears us. 1 John 5, 13, He that hath a son hath life, and he that hath not the son does not have life. These things I have written unto you that you that you believe on the Son, on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Here, reminded again, 
that the only way we receive life is through God's Son and Jesus, right? Do you believe in the name of the Son of, Jesus, of, the Son of God, Jesus? Then we've received life according to this verse, right? Again, just like the last verse, approaching the throne of grace, we can now, now we know we can now know that God hears us. Okay, we can ask for anything that lines up with His will, and we have it. Right? Again, the, the more we know God's word and His will, the more we can renew our minds and walk after the Spirit. Eventually, through habit, you will have a living. You'll be living from the Word, and commanding according to God's will, to create. His will on earth as it is in heaven and doing all through being thankful to God the Father. When you know what you have in you, you can't help but just to be thankful to the Father. You know what I mean? And when you get the reality of all that's in you, I mean, we've just went through just a few verses so far, but that's a lot that's already been accomplished. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Amen. You, you know, also, if we read the verse... You know, the, this reminds me of a verse also um, when he said he heareth us. It reminds me of John eleven forty one, When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, he was thanking the Father that he always hears him. You know, Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hearest me. And I know that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand on by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. You see, Jesus was thanking the Father because he already knew that he heard him, right? He always hears him, right? And know this, the Father always hears you. And you could be thankful when you're in need and when you're needing to set somebody free. There's never a time that God doesn't hear you. Now we see here that Jesus did not tell the Father or even ask the Father to raise, Jesus, to raise Lazarus from the dead, right? Remember, Jesus came that he might destroy the works of the devil, and it's God's will that people be free, right? Amen. So, Jesus was doing the will of him who sent him, right? So, Jesus took authority and cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And we all know what happened next, right? Lazarus came forth. Amen? We have grace and peace, Second Peter 1. Two, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. This verse says that we have grace and peace, and it can be multiplied through the knowledge of God. The more we know about Him and His nature, the more grace and peace that we have. Grace and peace are gifts that we receive by faith. And according to this, it can be multiplied through the knowledge of God. Now remember, in the Spirit, it's already there. Grace and peace is already in you. It's complete, right? It's, it's in you. So all we're having to do is make that a reality of renewing our mind to realize that's what we have. And the more we know of the Father, Jesus, the Holy Spirit in us, the more that multiplies. That, y'all get that? I mean, it's, that's, that's so awesome. It's kind of like, why would not anybody want to get in the Word? <laughs> you know? <laughs> we are blessed. Ephesians 1. Blessed be the Father and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Here it's saying that in time past, we've already been blessed. Okay? We're not moving towards a blessing. We already have them. Right? And we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Now realize this. Everything came that's physical came from the spiritual. Okay? God called them in existence. Right? It starts in the spiritual, and we have faith in God for the manifestations, okay? One day, uh, we were driving to Corpus, and we're taking my kids, because they were going to spend some time with my in-laws. And I was driving, and then Father just started asking me questions. Why do you pray for people? And I was like, well, for your glory, you know, for your glory, for, you know, to glorify you. He's like, well, why do you minister to people? Well, for your glory. You know, it's all... All these questions he kept asking me were the same answer. It was the same answer, well, for your glory. And he answered back, he says, you're right. You do, it, you do it all for my glory. But then he says, do it all from my glory. Come on. See, that's a big difference between looking forward and from the fact that it's already done. Okay? 
See, God, we, we look at things in past, present, future. God sees that things as eternal. You got that? This means that whether it be in us or another person, we can approach a person that's oppressed of the devil from a place where God's already been glorified in that person's freedom. Because we're already in a place of victory. Does that, y'all get that? That's a big change in perception in terms of how we see things in life. From a place, we always hear it, you know, you got to think from victory. Well, think from victory, we always look, we're always looking cause effect. I do this, it'll cause that. Which is true in terms of past, present, future, but God's already seeing the end result and being glorified in it already. Y'all get that? So we can look back on it, it have already been done. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Ephesians 1, 16. I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the wi- spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Here Paul is saying that he ceases not to give thanks and pray that we may receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, which is God, right? You see, Paul's not praying that you receive more. He's praying that you receive the revelation of what is already yours, right? He's praying for something, for you get the revelation of what already exists there. So Paul's praying that we get the revelation um, of what? In verse 18, that the, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and the, what is the riches of his glory and inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of this power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which, is, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but in the world to come, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So Paul's praying that our eyes of our understanding be enlightened to knowing the hope of his calling, to know the riches of his glory, of his inheritance to the saints, which is everything that we have in Christ in us, right? From all that he did. And know that the exceeding greatness of God's power that is in us, that he used when he raised Jesus from the dead. Do y'all know how much power that's in you, in Christ? <laughs> I'm learning. I'm in. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. The power is already in us. We just need to believe it, right? No wonder Paul was praying that we receive this revelation because we hear it, but how many people are actually walking in this realization of this truth? It says that the power in, is in us who believe, right? So what do we got to do? We got to believe because it's there. So Christ was raised from the dead, was set at the right hand of the heavenly places, far above all principality and power, and might, and dominion, in every name that is named, not only in this world, but in the one to come, hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all. Now we know we're the church, right? Which is his body, yes. right? So since we are in union with Christ, and anything that he said about him is said about us, right? Because everything comes from him anyway. So being said, in him we are far above all principality and power, and might, and dominion, and we have his name, which is above every name that is named. And all things have been put under our feet. I mean, y'all get that, right? <laughs> we are not under, we're not under circumstance. How many people here were under circumstance? You know, people say we're just under circumstance, and I'm, being, I'm just being affected by it. We're not under circumstance anymore, okay? We're over circumstance, okay? Overcome. Heard that song? I don't have a guitar, but I can't sing anyway. (laughs) See, when we're over it, I'm not at the effect anymore. See, this is big because the world goes by cause effect. I do this, or that, that. They do that, it cause effect. You know what I'm saying? Cause effect, cause effect. I am not at effect anymore. Okay? Again, we're to make things on earth as it is in heaven. I'm at cause. Does that make sense? Yes. I cause things to come into being. Amen. You make that? So anything that's did you feel like it's being at a, affecting you? Uh-uh. 
that's a renewing of the mind you need to get and realize, uh-uh, I'm at the cause of that. I caused that thing to leave. Amen? Amen? So I, I, mean, I pray that y'all get this, because this is, this is all who you are in Christ. How many believers are in here? This is all who you are. <laughs> this is who you are, okay? In Ephesians 2, 6, it says, We've been raised together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Again, this shows our union with Christ. It says that we've been raised up together with Christ and made us sit together in heavenly places with Him. This lets us know our position of authority in Him, right? Again, we're far above all the devil, <laughs> right? We're far above all of demonic, which means we can do the same works that He did, right? He says in John 14, 6, 14 12, Very verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. Jesus preached the gospel, healed the sick, and cast out devils. Wherever Jesus went, the kingdom went with him. Right? And he made earth as it is in heaven. Jesus said the kingdom's within us. Let us take the kingdom wherever we go and change the world to line up with heaven. Okay? We're to speak those things which be not as though they were. Let's not look at circumstance from under it. Let's be over it and change it and expand God's kingdom. Amen. Romans 12, 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So we know that it's not, we're not to be conformed to this world, right? right? In any way, shape, or form. And that we're supposed to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, right? So what are we supposed to be conformed to? We know it's God's word, right? And in Romans 8, 29, it says that we are predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus. That we might be the firstborn again among many brethren. And since he is the word made flesh, it all makes sense to renew our minds to what? The word of God, right? Which is a mirror of who we are in him. You get that? Knowing that, it even says in Colossians 1, 15, that Jesus was the image of the invisible God. So, that, so we know that we're, be, we're to be conformed to the image of Christ, who's in the image of the invisible God, our Father. Even Jesus said, if you see me, you've seen the Father. So again, how do we get conformed to the image of God? By renewing our mind to the Word of God, of who we already are in Him. Okay? We don't, we're not looking to become, we already are. We're actually getting our minds, again, it's, it's, I'll say that over and over again, we're actually getting our minds to catch up with the reality of who we already are. Amen. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> we're a new creature or creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that if you, we are in Christ, we're a new creature. This means a creature that's never been around before, right? It says, old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. What this is saying is what was... Ain't no more, right? That's Texan for ain't no more. <laughs> and that all things have become new. And it continues to say that these things, all these new things are of God. And if the old things that were in me are gone, and all these new things in me are of God, then why in the world am I going to think and believe anything else? Right? Everything else would just be a lie, right? Again, since all things that are in me are of God, and the Word says they are, then what's stopping us from totally demolishing the devil's teeth in every street corner everywhere we go? Nothing except our believing, right? We are sons, 1 John 3, 1. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we know we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. See, we are sons, okay? We're accepted in the beloved. And as a son, again, this shows our place of dominion and authority. Again, looking at the position in Christ as a son, we have dominion and authority, and it was God's original purpose. And it's his purpose now. 
If we go to Genesis 1, 26, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over the, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he man. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And having dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and every living thing that moveth upon the earth. See, from the beginning, God intended us, intended us to have dominion over all the earth and everything in it. Okay? Even now, as a born-again believer, we are to walk in dominion and authority over the earth, including sickness, disease, fear, over all the works of the devil. We're to be fruitful and multiply. We can, we can tell the works of the earth what to do. Y'all get that? We're the ones that should be telling those tornadoes to go. Right? We need the ones that actually need to stand and say, prevent it before it even happens. Okay? So, moving on. We are complete in him. Colossians 2, 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. It says here that Jesus had the fullness of God's nature in him, right? And we know that Jesus was God manifest in the flesh, right? And with having the completeness of of Christ in us, that means we are complete in Him. I always ask people, if you're complete in Christ, then what are you lacking? Nothing. You're not lacking anything. So the real me is the fullness of the Spirit of God dwelling in me. Right? I always tell people, you know, when I minister on the phone or even in person, you know, I usually do this on the phone when, you know, use their hands say, look, what you're looking at is your left hand. You're looking at what you're lacking, what you're missing, what you don't have. Okay, now, pull that away <laughs> and look at the other hand. That's who you are in Christ. That's what you're supposed to be looking at now. All those other things are dead. They're gone. You know, we think that we have to have them in our face in order to solve the issues. Jesus already solved it. He already took care of it. So we just got to keep our eye on him and first seek his kingdom and his righteousness. Amen. Right? And all these other things will come unto us. So, again, we keep our eye on him. Okay? Because he's in us. <laughs> we are ambassadors for Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.20 Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, you be reconciled to God. As an ambassador, we represent Christ, right? And we are from the kingdom of God. When we speak God's word, it's as though he's saying it. You get that? In other words, my mouth is his mouthpiece. Like he's using my mouth. Okay? When I lay hands, my hands are his hands. Okay? Wherever I sit foot, that's my embassy. Okay? Y'all get that? Amen. We're not of this world, but we're in it. And we do not have to live the same, by the same laws, the laws and rules anymore because the kingdom of God laws trump the demonic in all the areas. You get that? You need to know wherever you go, the devil has to bow his knee because of who you are in Christ. And you have to know and believe that. You have to believe that yourself, right? I had a vision about a year ago, and I walked into this room. And as I walked into the room, I saw a guy in a wheelchair. And immediately as I walked into the room, it was like this devil stepped out of the guy beside him. And he bowed down to me, like head first, where I just saw the top of his head. And then later on, I had the same vision, but as I walked into the room, it was like an afterblast of a nuclear bomb. It just went, it just like was, everything just went boosh. The guy was fine, but the devil and all his works went, just blew to smithereens. Um, that changed my reality as far as how I walked in life, because it even changed my perception on how I walked even in life. Because now, even as I walk, everywhere I walk, I can see these devils having to bow to me. You get that? So the devils have to bow down to you. You just need to know who's in you. Okay? To me, that's like, that's like, that's like an awesome vision that, I mean, if you get a hold of that truth, that'll change not only your life, but it'll change the ones around you. 
You get that? We are the righteousness of God in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. What this verse is saying is that Jesus became sin for us. He became what we were. We were sin. All right? Even though he never sinned, so that he made, we, were, that we could be made the righteousness of God in Christ. You see, there's nothing that we can do to become righteous, but by accepting Jesus our Lord and Savior, we become the righteousness of God in Christ because of what he did. Y'all know that. I mean, it's everything that we are in him has nothing to do with anything that we do. Amen. It's all that he did for us. I mean, if you read the scriptures, I mean, you can go to Ephesians, Colossians, you'll always see what God did for you first before he says go. Because you got to know what's in you to go out there. He's not going to just send you. You're not knowing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We are healed in 1 Peter 2.24, who hath own bear our sins in his body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stri stripes you were healed. We can now live unto righteousness and know that we were healed as part of what Jesus took care of at the whipping post. Okay? The word says we were healed in past tense. That's already been taken care of, right? It's not a future event. Okay? In the past event, we need to realize, it's a past event that we need to realize that it's already been taken place. It's already a truth. It's already happened. Like Curry always says, it's not having faith for something. It's a fact. Okay? It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, having faith when you're looking forward to something. But it's a fact because Jesus already did it. Does that make sense? Amen. We have the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 16, 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Here the keys represent authority and power to bind or loose. Okay? We can in Christ bind the enemy and loose all people from oppression because we bind here on earth what's already bound in heaven, okay? And whatsoever we loose here on earth is already loose in heaven, okay? We don't have to tell the enemy, I bind you. <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard that, but you don't have to go and say, I bind you, you know? We just got to tell him what to do. Get out. Go in Jesus' name. Does that make sense? We can have what we say. Mark eleven twenty three. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe in those things which he saith, shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. In this verse, Jesus is commanding us to believe that what we say will come to pass. Right? We're to have, the, we're to have authority we're to walk in the authority that we have to speak to that mountain, which is the problem, right? right? The mountain is anything in the way. Sickness, disease, the devil, a, a belief, a thought, that's a mountain, right? Anything that gets in the way from carrying out our mission of what the Word of God says to do or be, that's our mountain, right? This is similar to a mission in the military. If you have a mission in the military, for example, and you have to go in and save people that are held hostage... The whole intention is to go in and successfully complete the mission by setting the captives free, right? 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 And guess what happens when anything gets in the way? You smash them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like a roach. This is the same way for us, okay? We have a mission to set the captives free. And if anything gets in the way, we smash them in the name of Jesus, okay? With the power and authority that dwells in us. Amen? Amen. This verse also continues to say that whatever you desire when you pray, to believe that you have received and you shall have it. Remember the story I told you earlier about living from God's glory? We're to believe that we've already received that in order to have it. We're, we're supposed to believe that we've already received in order to have it. You get that? We live from the end result of already having obtained it. You get that? And finally, in John 17, 18, Jesus is praying to the Father and says, As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I also send them into the world. 
Now, we know that we're not sending the world empty-handed, right? Just in the several verses we've gone through here, we should realize all that's in you, right? You have freely received everything needed to be free of the enemy, so also freely give to others by setting them free in Jesus' name, right? Jesus already told you that he has all power, which is all authority, Matthew 28, having been given him in heaven and on earth, right? In other words, all power. Now, when he says all power, how much is left of the devil? None. None. So how much should we just believe God that Jesus has all authority and power, right? So, so with that, Jesus commands us to go, to teach all nations. He tells you to go and preach, saying that the kingdom, is heaven, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, right? And to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. He tells you to teach and observe all things that he commanded, and that these signs will follow you that believe. In his name, you'll cast out devils. You'll speak in new tongues. You'll take up, any, you'll take up serpents. And if you drink any deadly thing, it's not going to hurt you. You'll lay hands on the sick, and they'll recover. So again, you've freely received so much from Jesus, right? Now go freely and give to all who need to be healed. Go out and heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, and set all free in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we thank you for all you've done in us because of Jesus. We thank you that we know that it's not us, but it's all you in us, that we're full of your grace and your power and your love to accomplish anything that needs to be done. Just like you sent Jesus you sent us, and we go out in Jesus' name and set others free because you've set us free. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name right now. I pray for anybody that's sick in Jesus' name right now. All sickness, all disease, go right now in Jesus' name. Be free, be whole in Jesus' name. So be it. Amen. Amen. All right. If anybody needs any ministering, you know, feel free to come up. I'll be glad to minister to you guys. And I hope y'all, did I get anything out of this? Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Lord. Amen. Testing, okay. Um, just got a text from Curry about 20 minutes ago uh, from Spirit Word Church. So it's one of our main partner churches in South Africa. Um, that's Cobus. I don't know if y'all have heard him. No, I've probably heard him talk about it. Anyway, uh, look at it again. I'll be getting texts from different people all morning, so. It says, amazing miracles at Spirit Word, wheelchairs empty, stacks of crutches left after healing service, blind eyes open, all on video. Wow. And that's all I see. So, so for anyway, I figured y'all want to hear because people have been asking me, what have y'all heard? What have you heard? What do you know? <laughs> and um, yes. that's probably the first text I've gotten since he's been there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm guessing things are going pretty good at Spirit, at Spirit Word Church. Yes. So. Yeah, figured I'd share with y'all. Do what? There we go. So, yeah. Anyway, um, is that it, Kevin? All right, and that is it. God bless.